All right, so I want to talk about this problem. It's a maths extension two problem. It came up in like a a school assessment for a, a school where basically all the students, almost all the students, well, I think basically all the students got it wrong, and the teacher even got it wrong. Okay, and some of the people might have gotten it correct, but maybe for the wrong reasons. But yeah, so it's kind of an interesting problem in logic. Okay. So the statement, for all n in the set of natural numbers, if n cubed is odd, then n is odd. Okay. And the question is, what is the negation of this statement? All right. And basically, you can, you can construct your own sentence where you get to pick for all n or there exists n. You get to pick n cubed is odd or n cubed is not odd is the first part of it. You get to pick, so this is basically, originally it's like basically it implies. You can keep it implies or you can change the and or or, okay. And you can uh, either have the conclusion n is odd or you can have n is not odd, okay. And you so it's basically what, like 24 options or something, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so let's discuss some uh, tempting answers. So, the I think what the teacher and lots of students picked was there exists n for which um, n cubed is not odd implies n is not okay. <laughs> that's an unbelievable answer yeah so basically this answer is not only wrong okay it kind of indicates a lack of understanding of what's going on okay so so if for all n n cubed is not odd implies n is odd well that's that's I, I think it might be called the inverse okay so this is this is uh it's equivalent to the converse yeah so the contrapositive of n cubed is not odd implies n n is not odd is n is odd implies n cubed is odd yeah and that happens to be also true, right? So this cannot be the negation. Okay, but then we have another interesting alternative, okay? So there exists n for which n cubed is odd implies n is odd, not odd. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So let's think about this. So, so if there exists n, okay, such that n cubed is odd implies n is not odd. Okay. Does there exist such an n? Uh well, so here you have to understand that how implies works, you know? So does there exist so implies always outputs true, okay, if the premise is false. Okay. So if there exists so so if a number is even, right? Yeah, then there would exist an n um, such that n cubed is odd. So, so the even n, that's a false statement, right? Yeah. And then it implies n is not odd. Well, it doesn't really matter what, if that statement is true or not. The implication yeah. will be true. Does that make sense? Yeah. So actually, there does exist an n for which the implication is true. Yeah? Mm. And so... Um, and I, I, so the fundamentally the issue with this and the previous answer was they're both true statements, right? And 
the original statement was a true statement. And when we negate it, we're trying to get a false statement. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so it turns out one of the, your, your, so, so this other answer is probably the best and it wasn't on the options that, so basically it's like if something's true for all n, yeah. then the negation is it's, it's like there is an n for which it's not true, yeah. right? So it's actually, okay, and then, but this is not the full picture. I'll get, I'll get to something interesting in a moment, okay? So there exists an n. Um, for which it's not true. So, so, the, so there's an n cubed which is odd, right? Yeah. And there's an n that's not odd for that same n. Yeah. Okay. So that that was that was yes, it was one of your answers. Yes. Well, there exists an n. Isn't n and n implies the same thing because it's a singular n? No, no, because the because the statement. Has it's at the ends of variable, so the, there's lots of cases for which the implies can output true, but the and here we, we you can see the and here will never output true, right? Because n cubed can't be both odd and n is not odd. Yeah, but so this is a false statement now. But why doesn't it work if it's implies? I explained that you weren't listening. I said implies will output true if the premise is false. So if you change this to an implies, when you have an even n, yeah. that's going to be a true statement, like vacuously. Okay. Okay, why is this not the full answer? Okay. Why is this not the full answer? Well, I mean, it could be the full answer. It's just, you'll know it's not the full answer once I tell you this. So let's look at the more general situation. You have a P and a Q, right? And you have the statement for all n in n. P of n implies Q of n, right? Um, so if you have a general statement, then I guess our answer is basically there exists an n such that P of n and not Q of n, right? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And we can prove that that's the answer for the general situation. Yeah. Yeah. Because actually, if you know what implication is, so P implies N, P implies Q, is actually logically equivalent to um, not P or Q. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if, if the premise is false, then it's going to be true. So that's the not yeah. P part. Or if the P premise is true, then the Q has to also be true. Yeah? yeah. So that's how implication works. Okay. So if you want to negate, some, so and it's easy to negate an or statement, okay? So if it's like something or something, then the negation is like not this and not that. Does that make yeah. sense? So the negation of this is just P and not Q, see? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, not so. Yeah. Okay. So, so I guess the difference here is this works for any statements P or Q, right? You don't actually know what the statements P and Q are, right? But in the first problem, okay, you actually given the statements P and Q, right? So it's a little bit different actually, because when you're given the statements P and Q and a quantifier for all, yeah? So when you have the quantifier here, it makes the statement, like the N in the statement is now just a dummy variable, you understand? So the whole statement is just a sentence. It's either true or false. So here, the, the special case where, where you have the statements P and Q, the, the statement is actually just equivalent to the statement true. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So then the negation of true is just false. Yeah. Right? So actually, you can pick, you can pick any false statement and it will be the correct negation. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because it's not, it's, it doesn't have to be true for all P and Q, right? Yeah. It just has to be, because this only outputs one value, right? Yeah. So logically, it doesn't actually matter what the statements are. This statement is just true, right? Yeah. Yeah. So whereas the second situation, you don't actually know what the statements are, true or not. So you have to, your negation has to take into account all P's and Q's, right? 
So here, there's some technically correct answers that don't really make too much sense. So we can try. Let's let's try to find a statement that's just false. Yeah, using this. Does that make sense? What I'm saying. All n n cube is odd implies n is not odd. When well, no, that's just weird. Yeah. So maybe that's true. For all n, n cubed is odd implies n is not odd, yeah? Yeah. So that has to be true for all n, right? Yeah. Okay. So now we just take an n for which n cubed is odd, right? Yeah. So let's take, you know, n equals 1, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this case, it's true implies false, right? Yeah. Which is a false statement, yeah? So, so then this statement's also, so this is technically also a correct answer to the question, even though it's, so in the sense, like the other answer is the most correct in the sense it works for all P and Q, but out of all the 24 possible answers, there are possibly more correct answers because of the specific oh, yeah. statements that were used. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I don't actually know how the syllabus deals with it, but. I don't know. I, 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 in my book, I define, in my HSC book, I define like logical statements as functions oh. on sets. So in this case, it'd be like functions from the natural numbers to true and false. Uh -huh. But I, I, I kind of do it in two steps so people don't get too scared by the functions. Oh, this is, this is actually, this is my book. This is a, <laughs> this is the P, this is on the PDF. Oh, job, do you know, it's available in bookstores, guys. Which one? Uh, actually, it's only available in the Five Senses bookstore. Um, and it's, uh, cost 99.95. <laughs> that purposeful? I think so. All right, anyway, so, do you have any more questions about this? No, sir. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Can we find another example of a statement that's also false? For all n, n cubed. Yeah, I think for all n is a pretty easy way to get false statements, right? Yes. n cubed is not odd. Implies. Implies. n is not, n is odd. Well, I've got another one. For all n, n cubed is not odd and n is odd. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so there's actually lots of answers that are technically correct in, in, a, in a context where it's like presumed only one answer would be correct, you know? But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mean to hate on the test so much, but I don't think the test even had that as, the, as an answer, as a possible answer. And then by, by and large, most people picked not P implies not Q. Alright, like, subscribe and comment.